Okay, in this segment, we're going to learn how to analyze business transactions into debit and credit parts. And in order to do that, we have to have a good understanding of the five basic account types. Uh, we, did the, we learned about this in an earlier segment, but I'm just going to review briefly the five basic account types. We started with assets, and we learned that those were uh, resources owned by the business, and that included cash, accounts receivable, inventory, equipment, buildings, land, anyway, any resources uh, owned by the business also includes supplies. Then uh, liabilities were another one in a very short definition of liability is debt. And uh, most liability accounts end in the word payable. The third account we learned about was uh, the stockholder's equity account. Uh, those are the stock, represents the stockholder's rights to the assets of the business. And there are three uh, types of equity accounts we'll be learning um, and working with in this segment. Stockhold, common stock, retained earnings, and the dividends account. We also learned that revenues, that's the fourth account type, um, are sales of services or products. It's what the business is, uh, it's what we're in business to do. And then expenses are assets consumed in the process of generating revenue or um, costs used to earn revenue. So now with uh, after a review of uh, those five basic account types, we'll start learning, uh, talking about uh, this new topic. We also learned about the accounting equation in an earlier segment. And we analyzed transactions by identifying increases and decreases in accounts and organized them into the accounting equation. So in this segment, we're going to learn how to analyze business transactions by identifying increases and decreases in accounts and classifying them into debits and credits and then entering them in a journal. Now the chart of accounts is a list of accounts that is used by the business. And we're going to have that for the uh, chart of accounts for the problems that we work. And then we're going to need to choose the specific accounts to be used in the transactions from the chart of accounts. All businesses use what's called the double entry accounting uh, system and it's based on the accounting equation and it requires first of all that every business transaction be recorded in at least two accounts and that the total debits recorded for the transaction equal the total credits recorded for each transaction. And I always ask my students, what do you think of when you think of the word debit? And what do you think of when you think of the word credit? And I usually get a lot of different answers, but it's very rare that I get the right one. So I'm going to assume that you've thought about what that means to you, and then I'm going to tell you what it really means in accounting. In accounting, all debit means is left, and all credit means is right. The debit side of the account is the left side, and the credit side is the right side. And this can be illustrated by a T. Now I hope that you've downloaded the uh, handouts that go with this section and we'll be able to follow along with what I'm explaining. Um, when we look at our uh, balance sheet accounts, any asset account, the debit side is the left side and that's the increase side. So when we increase the uh, an asset account, we will be debiting. Any um, credit I'm sorry, any decrease in an asset account, we will be crediting the asset account and therefore it will be decreasing. Okay, liabilities or the stockholder's equity accounts, any, um, the debit side or the left side is the decrease side and the credit side, the right hand side, is the increase side. So it's just exactly the opposite as with assets. For any revenue accounts, the um, debit side is the decrease side. The credit side, which is the right side, is the increase side. And with any expense accounts, the debit side is the increase side. And the credit side on the right is the decrease side. 
And in analyzing transactions, I know this is a lot to take in, but there's really four questions you need to ask yourself. The first one is when you read over a transaction, you ask yourself, what accounts are involved here? And we can get some clues there by looking at the chart of accounts. The second type question we want to ask ourselves is what account type are they? Are, is it an asset? Is it a liability? Is it an equity account? Is it a revenue? Or is it an expense? Then you want to ask yourself, did the account increase or decrease? And after you've done that, um, the last thing that you're going to determine is if you're going to debit or credit that account using the rules on this sheet. So what I want you to do is we're going to work through an actual problem and as we do, I want you to refer back to this sheet. Uh, I'm going to be turning the page, but we'll be referring back to this sheet over and over again as we work through transactions. Nobody expects you to have a crystal clear picture of this when you're first learning, so please feel free to work back to that sheet as we work through um, these transactions. So um, looking at the, this is a general journal. There's four columns in a general journal. Over here on the far left hand side we have the date column because transactions are recorded in date order. Then in the next column we have a place to put the account name. We're going to be trying to figure out what accounts belong on these lines. And Then we have a column for debit and we have a column for credit. Notice the far right column is the credit side. If you remember earlier, I told you that the credit is the right hand side, so the credit uh, on our general journal is all the way to the right, and to the left of it, we find the debit side. Okay, some other things to remember when uh, you're uh, using the general journal is that each um, transaction is going to take up at least two lines because you're going to have at least one debit and at least one credit for every transaction. And if you remember, debits must equal credits. For purposes of this very simple problem, we're just going to have one debit and one credit for each transaction. So each one of these transactions will be taking up two lines. And the problem is going to tell you what, um, what accounts are in the company's chart of accounts. So you will have these accounts to choose from when you're analyzing the transactions. So let's look at exactly what the problem says on your handout. It says the ABC company has the following accounts in its chart of accounts. It has cash, accounts receivable, supplies, office equipment, accounts payable, capital stock and retained earnings, dividends, fees earned, rent expense, advertising expense, utility expense, and miscellaneous expense. Now that's a lot of accounts to have to go back through and figure out which one to use, but these accounts are actually listed in a particular order. Within the chart of accounts, you'll always find assets are first. So on this chart of accounts, our assets are cash, accounts receivable, supplies and office equipment. Those are the resources owned by this business. Um, liabilities, if you remember, most often end in the word payable. So accounts payable is our liability account. Kind of works that way in real life. We have a whole lot of asset accounts. We only have a few um, liabilities. And then um, our equity accounts are our capital stock, retained earnings and dividends. Then listed next are our revenues, revenue account, which is fees earned. We just have one revenue account. And then we have a whole lot of expense accounts, rent expense, advertising expense, utilities expense, and miscellaneous expense. The easiest way to identify an expense account is it always ends in the word expense.